14th question. You have 10 data values and you need to find the mean of this data. Normally what you will do in this case is to actually just add up these 10 values. Some of you may actually be tempted to use the calculator. Please do me a favor and time yourself when you input these 10 values in the calculator. Believe me, it will take a decent amount of time, close to a minute or more, just adding up on a calculator. It will be quicker to either add it yourself. So in the ordinary way, you'll go about it as, you know, 6 plus 8 is 14, 14 and 16 is 30, and then you have 417, which is 21. So 30, 21, 51, and then 26 is 77, and the last four values are 23, so it all adds up to 100. 100 divided by 10, your answer is going to be 10. So that's the ordinary way to go about it. In the Prepto way, uh, it makes more sense to just group numbers that add up to a zero, right? So you say uh, 16 and 4, for example, is adding up to a zero, it's adding up to 20, right? And then 6 plus 8, 14, something ending in 4 and 26 will give me a zero. So that will give me another 40, right? 14 plus 26. Now we are left with 17, 8 and these triple fives. This is going to be 15. We can keep 15 as it is and 17 and 8 is going to be 25. So in this case, you are avoiding errors and you are adding in zeros and that will make this question quicker to solve, right? If you add all of these up, you will get 100 of course. Divide by 10 and your mean is 10. 15th question. The equation E of t. So these equations are very popular, right? You already have seen something similar in module 1. So you have basically a starting value, that's always your first part, with a growth rate, right? And raised to the time period. So here also they're clearly saying t is the number of years. So that's the time period, right? So how many years a restaurant was open is t. 1.8 means that the original one plus a growth rate of 0.8, which is 80%. So you have an 80% growth rate. And then this 5 is what you started with. Right? So the best interpretation of 5 is the estimate, estimated number of employees when the restaurant opened. You can also find out that phi is what happened when it opened by just substituting t is equal to 0. t is equal to 0 means the restaurant has just started. So when you put t is equal to 0, this whole thing becomes 1 and you will get 5 as the value when the restaurant just started. That's another way of looking at it. Sixteenth question. G of x is equal to x square plus 55 minimum value. Now we have already drawn x square, right? And we know that the minimum value of x square is 0. As you go either in the positive or in the negative direction, x square keeps increasing. So here also the minimum value of x square is going to be 0. And the minimum value of g of x will be when x square is minimized. And that minimum value will be 55. Right? Seventeenth question. Each year, the value of an investment increases by 0.49 of its value the previous year. So the first year, let's say if you start out with 100, right, 0.49% is basically 0.49. Next year, you will not have an increase of 0.49. You'll have an increase of more than that because you'll have an increase of 0.49 on 100, 0.49. So the increase every year is not the same, which means there's nothing linear about the increase or the decrease. First of all, we know there's an increase, right? There's, they have clearly mentioned increases. So option A and B are out. And the if every year it increases by the same amount, then it's linear. But this is increasing by the same percentage, and hence it is exponential, right? 18th question. The population of Greenville increased by 7% from 2015 to 2016. So if it is k times the 2015, population, what is the value of k? So again, right, this is a growth equation. Your 2016 value is going to be 1 plus the growth rate, which is 7%, right? So 1.07 of your 2015 population. So that is 1.07. And hence, 2016 is going to be 1.07 times 2015. That's the ordinary way of doing it, working with equations. In the Prepto way, whenever you have a percentage, you can just substitute the value of 100. So you say, let's start off with 100 people in 2015. 
how many will I have in 2016? So this grows by 7% which is nothing but 7 and in 2016 you will have 107. So how much is 107 as a percentage of 100? As a ratio of 100 it's 1.07. So again in the prep two way you quickly get 1.07 and you don't have to deal with equations. Right? Great, moving on. So this is a question on indices. You have to find out which of these expressions finally evaluate to a raised to 11 by 12. So let's quickly go through some basic indices here, right? That uh, when you have something like x raised to this symbol, right? So x and this symbol, this means it is the fifth root of x, right? So it is x raised to 1 by 5. Or if I want to generalize this further, if you have something like this, that means it is the yth root, which means I'll write it like this. So keeping this in mind, let's start looking at options, right? The first option you have is a raised to 132 and 12th root of that. So I'll write it as this, 132 divided by 12, which is basically a raised to 11, correct? Second one you have is a raised to 132 and since here you have 144 outside, you'll divide by 144, right? So you'll get is equal to you will cancel 12 out, 11 on top 12. So that's it, you get 11 by 12. And unlike an English section, which, which actually you will move on further to just check out C and D, in maths you don't need to, answer will be option B, right? You don't need to check these options. Great, 20th question. So an event planner is planning a party. It costs the event planner a one-time fee of $35 to rent the venue and $10.25 per attendee. The event planner has a budget of $200. What is the greatest number of attendees possible without exceeding the budget? So your event planner has a total budget of $200 out of which you have to pay a one-time basic fee of $35, which means you have $165 left for attendees. Now at max, how many attendees can you have? So I need to divide the cost per attendee Right, I have to take 165 and divide that by the cost per attendee. So you can use your Desmos calculator. You will see that and you can see right that this is 160 and this is 10. So 16 is a good number. Right? If I just approximate this to 160 over 10 and we can check for 16. So 10.25 is 41 by 4. Right? 10, 1, 4. And hence if I multiply by 16. 164 dollars will be used up as per attendee cost and I have 165 that means I have enough dollars to spare and I can have 16 people attending without exceeding the budget so the answer is 16. You don't need to do all this you can just use your Desmos you will get 16 point something but if you are good with fractions then you can see the answer straight away or you can approximate also from here right. 21st question. What is the positive value of x minus 1? So in the ordinary way, right, you will start by saying that 4x minus 4 modulus. Modulus means that the positive value is 1, 1, 2. So originally, either 4x minus 4 was 1, 1, 2 or 4x minus 4 was minus 1, 1, 2. Then only the positive value will turn out to be 1, 1, 2, right? So from here you can find out that 4x is equal to 116, x is equal to 29 and x minus 1 is equal to 28. So this is one value, I need to check for the other also. So 4x here is equal to minus 108, x is equal to minus 27 and x minus 1 is equal to minus 28, right? But since we want the positive value, right, we will put in 28 as our answer. This is the ordinary way of going about it. But in the prepto way, guys, right, we need to understand that 4 is positive and 4 is present in both the terms. So I can remove the 4 common. I can write this as 4 times the modulus of x minus 1 is equal to 1, 1, 2, which means modulus of x minus 1 is equal to 28. And that's it. This is the positive value of x minus 1. Right? And again, the hint is here. Why are they asking us for x minus 2? 
Why are they not asking us for x minus, uh, sorry, why are they asking us for x minus 1 and not x minus 2 and not x minus 3, right? They are asking for x minus 1 because of this, because this is 4 times x minus 1. 